Well, I hope you're here to apologize. Ah! No, no, no! Put me down! Stop it! No! Let me go! Me? Him? So, Thiago, he was saying, let me go. What does that mean if you ask someone to let you go? Yeah, in this context, the person, or in this case, the horse is holding you and you are asking the, the horse in this case, right, to free you. But Ethan, this phrase, let me go, can be used in other contexts, right? You can let someone go, for example, as another way to say to fire someone. Or even in romantic relationships. Yes. And when you break up with someone and the person doesn't get over it, you say, hey, you gotta let me go. We broke up two <laughs> years ago. <laughs> That's true. That sounds kind of poetic, right? Yeah, maybe in a song, yeah. I'm gonna have to let you go. Okay. All right, today we are learning English with a funny clip from Tangled. Great animation. Get ready to learn tons of expressions and phrases today. But before we start, I have an important message to give you. If you're watching me now, it's because you clicked on this video. This tells me that, just like me, you love learning English with movies and TV series. Am I right? But you know what? I envy you a little bit, because... I am also a non-native English speaker and learner, but I didn't have this channel back when I was learning English many, many years ago. I really wish I had content like this back then. But now, it is our mission here to help as many people as possible understand their favorite movies and TV series. So help us grow and impact even more learners by subscribing. If you are already a subscriber to the channel, share this channel with friends and family so that we can impact even more lives. Do we have a deal? Thank you. Now sit. Sit. What? Now drop the boot. Drop it. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Oh, you all tired from chasing this bad man all over the place? Excuse me? Nobody appreciates you, do they? Do they? Oh, come on. He's a bad horse! Oh, he's nothing but a big sweetheart. <laughs> Isn't that right, Maximus? You've got to be kidding me. So there's some really nice vocabulary here, I think especially if we're talking to animals. So he says, easy boy, easy. What does that mean when we say that to an animal? are trying to calm the animal down but what I find interesting mm -hmm. Ethan is that this is a good example of collocation which is a group of words that are frequently used together right because we don't mm -hmm. say to a horse or to a dog calm down calm down boy right <laughs> I think it's more common to say easy <laughs> boy easy boy right calm down has to do more when someone's emotionally tense so you'd say you know calm down it's okay animals they do have emotions, of course, but they don't get like stressed out or you don't notice them suffering from a strong emotion. You're not trying to console them like you would a friend, right? I might say this just to give people another context with my dog, Phoebe, if I'm about to give her a treat and sometimes dogs, especially she's very enthusiastic about food, so they might go very quickly to get it, you know, before you take it away or before it disappears or something or just because they're very excited. So I'll say to her easy, you know, to let her know, like, you know, be gentle. Don't bite my, don't bite my finger. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> That's a nice idiom, isn't it? <laughs> don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's literally referring to an animal that, you know, don't mm -hmm. bite the hand that's giving you the food. Yeah. But it's kind of like to say not to do something negative to someone who's helping you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be your boss or it could be your parents, you know, if they're still mm -hmm. supporting you. Yeah. Like don't aggravate them. Right. So you might want to use that with your son, your daughter when... They're teenagers. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> <laughs> he says settle down next, which I think is just the same as what we were just talking about, calm down, right? So he used it for the horse, but you could also use that for someone who's being too rowdy. 
like your, your kids again, you might tell them to settle down if they're making a lot of noise. You're like, settle down. I'm trying to record a podcast here. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a good word, by the way. When you are rowdy, you are very energetic, right? Like kids, mm. when they are super excited, they act in a rowdy way. We could also use this expression, settle down, in other contexts. For example, when you get married and decide to raise a family or have kids, we can say that you settle or you settle down when you are ready to have more of a stable life. Or you might say that to that bachelor friend who's always with a different partner. Like, you know, when are you gonna settle down? And there's a lot of nice other commands. Say sit like a dog. This is actually quite humorous because you wouldn't say that to a horse, I believe, because mm -hmm. horses don't really sit like a dog. This is another one I'd use with Phoebe. He says, drop the boot. So what does it mean, drop it? Now sit. <laughs> sit. What? Now drop the boot. <laughs> drop it. Imagine I'm holding something here and then I let it go and then it falls on the floor, I drop it. And as a command for an animal, it's usually when they have it in your mouth, something they're not supposed to have in their mouth and you want them to give it up. So by the way, I mean, this is one of the things I find fascinating about English, is that we can use the word, the same word in multiple contexts many times in English. It's amazing. In, in my native language, in Portuguese, not quite. We tend to have one specific word for everything. But in English, I find mm -hmm. that you can use, you can reuse words. Uh, just to give you guys an example, let's say you're talking about your favorite artist, like uh, Taylor Swift, for example. You can say that Taylor Swift has recently dropped a new single or she has recently dropped mm -hmm. a new album. I thought you were gonna bring up another context, which is like, your son keeps asking you for the new PlayStation. He's asking you over and over again, and you're just, you're fed up, you're sick of it. You're like, drop it, I'm not buying it for you, or maybe for Christmas, stop asking me, drop it. Very similar to the literal meaning that you would say to an animal, but it's saying it more figurative, like drop a topic or drop a request, stop mm. saying it. All right, and then she says, you're such a good boy. Again, something we say to animals, good boy, good girl. Oh. Boy, yes, you are. Oh. I think this is one of those nice phrases you can memorize as a chunk, as a group, and just replace mm -hmm. the adjective good for another adjective depending on the context. So, you are such a talented singer, you are such a nice person, you just you can play mm -hmm. with different adjectives here, but the structure you are such a or somebody is such a is the same. But you wouldn't say this to a person, probably, you're such a good boy. Or you're such a good girl. It sounds it sounds weird if you say it to a person. It sounds it does, condescending. Yeah. So this is interesting. She says, you all tired as a question. And she didn't use any auxiliary verb right there, right? So it's not like people would have learned in school. You all tired from chasing this bad man all over the place. Excuse me? Very common thing that natives do, right? They drop the auxiliary mm -hmm. verb. Even though they are asking a question, it just makes them sound more natural. Maybe they want to communicate the idea quicker. It's exactly that, that. We're flexible with the language, but if you want to be grammatically correct, you should use the auxiliary. And then chasing the bad man all over the place. This is interesting, right? All, all over the place. But what does that mean when you say all over the place? Yeah, again, one of those uh, common collocations, phrases we always see, right? It could be everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you see, instead mm -hmm. of saying, are you all tired from chasing the bad man everywhere, which is okay, mm -hmm. if you can say all over the place, you sound more natural because you're using a colloquial phrase there. All right, we have a grammar point here that nobody appreciates you, do they? Nobody appreciates you, do they? Do they? Oh, come on. He's a bad horse. Oh, he's nothing but a big sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, this is an example of a question tag or tag question, which is a mini mm -hmm. question that you ask at the end of a sentence for confirmation, not because you, you want to ask the question. The rule is for an affirmative sentence, the tag at the end should be negative and vice versa. Mm -hmm. For negative sentences, the tag should be affirmative. What I found interesting about this phrase in particular is that the word nobody is a negative word. We don't have not here or don't or doesn't. We have the word nobody, but the word nobody gives the sentence this negative meaning. That's why the tag is affirmative, do they? So it's important to point mm -hmm. that out. Uh, another example could be never. If you have never in the sentence, never makes the sentence negative. So the tag will be affirmative right after. So it's important to know those markers that help you to know if it's positive or negative, right? All right, and then Flynn says that he's a bad horse, but Rapunzel disagrees saying he's nothing but a big sweetheart. What does that mean? 
So he's nothing but a big sweetheart. Could be he he isn't anything except a big sweetheart. It's a nice collocation as well. Yeah, nothing but a.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you said too, he isn't anything but a big sweetheart. It sounds weird, right? So、mm. the more natural sounding collocation is he's nothing but a. That reminds me of a a great classic rock song from the eighties called "Nothing But a Good Time" by a glam metal <laughs> band called Poison. All right, and then well, let's finish up this clip. There's some really nice connected speech at the end. You've got to be kidding me. So how how does Flynn say there? You've got to be kidding me. That is interesting because in this scene in particular, he actually emphasizes everything because he wants to be emphatic.、Mm -hmm. He says, "You've got to be kidding me," which is okay.、Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to be more emphatic, you can pronounce everything. But quite often in regular conversation, Ethan, how do natives usually reduce this, like in a quicker fashion? You gotta be kidding me. Ah, there you go. So you would drop the auxiliary verb, like we saw earlier. You reduce you to ya. And then got to be. That's a really nice word chunk to learn. Gotta be. Gotta be. You gotta be kidding me. I'm sure you have experienced this. Imagine you are watching a movie or TV series in English, and you see a word there. You understand the word. You recognize the word. But when you have to speak English with other people, you never use that word because you never remember it. I used to experience this all the time. You know why this happens. This happens because that word is probably part of your passive vocabulary, not your active vocabulary. If you are curious to learn how you can transfer words from your passive vocabulary to your active vocabulary, you gotta check out the Real Life English app. I say this because with the app you can practice new words and expressions using intelligent flashcards. Our app works with the spaced repetition system. Which presents you with the words you're trying to learn at strategic times, so you never forget them again. So join tens of thousands of learners who use the Real Life English app to improve their vocabulary. You can click up here, also down in the description of this video, or go to Google Play Store, Apple App Store, search for Real Life English, and download the app from there. All right, let's check out the next clip. Look, today is kind of the biggest day of my life, and the thing is, I need you not to get him arrested. Just for 24 hours, and then you can chase each other to your heart's content. Okay? <sighs> and it's also my birthday. Just so you know. <clears throat> So we have another nice, super common connected speech here. That Rapunzel says, "Look, today is kind of the biggest day of my life." So she doesn't say "kind of," she says "kinda." Almost always reduce in our speech, right? Look, today is kind of the biggest day of my life.、Mm -hmm. And Nathan, I have a question to ask you here about this because you know the, the normal sentence here would be, "Today is the biggest day of my life." Why is she saying today is kind of the biggest day of my life? Is it like? She isn't sure about what she's saying, or to communicate something else. It's just a filler word, right? That、mm -hmm. sometimes we use these when we're thinking, say, you know, or kinda, probably.、Mm -hmm. There's these different things that they don't necessarily—they're not necessarily to communicate anything. Sometimes we'll use them as an emphasizer, or in this case, it might be to de-emphasize or show some doubt or something like that. But I think in this case, it's just one of those things that's like a native pattern of speech that you throw these words in. Many learners might know like, but、mm -hmm. many Americans have a bad habit of using like too much. So it's、mm -hmm. the same idea. But yeah, that, that's nice. I mean,、uh, maybe you don't want to overuse these, but it's, it's good to use these sometimes to add a little bit more naturalness to your speech, right? Most definitely. I think that's one of the things that separates more beginner, intermediate learners from advanced learners. Because advanced learners, they really pay attention to this and things they watch and listen to, and they start playing around with adding them creatively in their own speech. I really like this next phrase. The thing is, so that's something we use all the time. Why? Why do we use that? The thing is, and the thing is, I need you not to get him arrested. Just for 24 hours, and then you can chase each other to your heart's content. Okay? Again, as a learner, if I translate that to my native language, it makes no sense at all. 
But here, this is a way to introduce an argument, an idea. Uh, when you want to explain to somebody a situation, you can proceed or you can start by using this. Ethan, I have something important to share with you. Look, the mm -hmm. thing is, and then you start saying, it's like you are preparing the other person to what you are about to say. And then she continues, actually, there's some nice grammar here. I need you not to get him arrested. What's going on there? Quite, quite a lot here, I would say. Uh, so when you get somebody arrested, you are the cause for that person being arrested. You influenced mm -hmm. that person being arrested. Or another example could be to get someone fired. Maybe you do something at work mm -hmm. that harms your coworker, and because of what you did, you get your coworker fired. So you are the primary responsible there. But uh, I also found interesting the negative here, yeah? Because the, the, the affirmative sentence would be, I need you to get him arrested. But then the mm -hmm. negative is not, I need you, don't get him arrested. I picture a typical learner saying this actually as a mistake, but here we are using the infinitive to mm -hmm. get, not to get, just like Shakespeare, to be, not to be. All right. And then she says that they can chase each other to their heart's content. There's a couple of nice things here. What does it mean if you're chasing someone? You are running after that person, like going after that person actively, like the police is chasing the thieves that just robbed the bank, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Just like a cat chases a mouse, right? Ah, Tom and Jerry, for example. And then if you do something to your heart's content, I love this one. What does that mean? I would say that to do something as much as you'd like. You might be on vacation and you let your kids eat dessert to their heart's content. They can have as much cake and ice cream because it's an all you can eat buffet, right? Right. Or, you know, if you uh, abstain from sugar for 30 days as a resolution, mm. on day one, the next month, you can binge. <laughs> binge to your heart's content on candy, right? <laughs> what does that mean to binge? In this context, to eat a bunch of candy in a row without stopping. To wrap up today's lesson, the final expression we have here is, just so you know. And it's also my birthday. Just so you know. <clears throat> There's a lot of these here, right? Of The thing is, and the, these things that you can use as sort of linkers or things to add a little bit more flavor to your sentence. So a bit like you're adding some, some spices to a dish to make it a little bit tastier, a little bit more complex and interesting. When do we use this sort of linking phrase? It could be before you share something or after you share something. But the idea is I want you to be updated with mm -hmm. what's going on here. So I, I'm going to share something with you just so you know, just so you are aware of the situation. And in this case, she could just say, and it's also my birthday, but she emphasizes it by saying, and just so you know, it's also my birthday and just so you know. All right. So. Shall we watch again? You all can test your English by trying to understand it this time without subtitles. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! 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 Easy, boy, easy! Settle down! Whoa! Easy, boy! Easy! Easy! Boy. easy. easy. That's it! Now sit. Sit. What? Now drop the boot. Drop it. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Oh, you all tired from chasing this bad man all over the place? Excuse me? Nobody appreciates you, do they? Do they? Oh, come on. He's a bad horse! Oh, he's nothing but a big sweetheart. <laughs> Isn't that right, Maximus? You've got to be kidding me. Look, today is kind of the biggest day of my life. And the thing is, I need you not to get him arrested. Just for 24 hours and then you can chase each other to your heart's content, okay? And it's also my birthday, just so you know. All right, we had fun today with Tangled, right? If you want to keep learning English and having a ton of fun, check out this next lesson. I'll talk to you soon. Is this hair? Struggling, struggling is pointless. Huh?
Huh? I know why you're here, and I'm not afraid of you. What? 